Dice are so simple, and I think that's why I love it so much when people make them unnecessarily complicated. Like, there's no need to innovate on this form. It's worked for 4,500 years. Why would we reinvent it? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's fun. Today, I'm going to show you my most unnecessary, most impractical dice. One of them is near impossible to roll. One of them costs $200. One of them isn't even technically a die, based on the definition of the word. Now, I use that label, useless, with so much love. I think there's something so joyful and whimsical about playing with the concept of dice. But I admit I am a dragon with a horde of dice, so I don't act normal about this stuff. That's why I've devised a 1 to 10 rating scale, which I am calling the Dragon Scale pun intended. Basically, how much of a dice dragon do you need to be in order to actually purchase this item? The higher the dice rank on the dragon scale, the more useless they are. We're gonna start with the ones, the least useless dice, the dice that even non-dragons might buy, and then we'll work our way up to the tens, dice that nobody in their right mind would purchase, which of course I have purchased. Here we go! I want to start with kind of an honorable mention category because these dice aren't technically useless, but they are definitely unnecessary. I'm talking about dice in really weird shapes. A great example is this pencil D6 from Reaper Media. It's 3D printed in color. This feels like a D6 that would come in a board game box, like for a game that just needs one D6 and has some sort of scholastic theme. I am obviously a real sucker for dice aesthetics, and I think there is no more beautiful dice aesthetic than crystals. So when I I saw this crystal set from Bear Cake Dice on Etsy, I was like, yep, gotta have those. A lot of dice sets have a crystalline D4 or maybe like some elongated crystalline D10s, but this set is all crystal shapes. Like this is the D20. And of course you can't talk about dice in weird shapes without talking about Polyhero. I got a whole eight piece wizard set, got a little scroll, various potion shapes. I'm particularly into their highly specific dice collections, like these little potion bottle shaped D4s, which obviously are perfect for rolling rolling a healing potion, but could also be handed out to signify that you have bless. Or these fireball shaped D6s. Rolling fireball is already satisfying, but imagine how satisfying it would be if you just had a mitt full of little fireballs. They really do work just the same way that regular dice do, they just don't have to be in these shapes. So we will call these a 1 on the dragon scale. They will set our baseline. If you don't consider yourself to be a dice dragon, but you think you might buy these, you got, you got a little dragon in you. Okay, full disclosure, these next sets were gifted to me at a con, presumably because they wanted me to mention them on their social media, but I doubt that they wanted me to call them useless. The risk you take! <laughs> these dice are from Studio Woe, and they are scented. Supposedly the scent will last for a really long time, especially if you store them in the box, which like recharges their smells. I'm gonna be honest, I can't speak to that because I have not removed them from the box since first smelling them at the con. This one's called Nature's Embrace and smells like earth and fir tree and arcane vapors it smells like a like a floral soap there's also ancient armory which smells like steel and leather i don't know this doesn't really smell like anything to me. This must be incredibly boring to watch on camera because you can't smell them. Now, obviously, this is just a regular set of dice. They are completely usable, but the fact that they are scented is ridiculous. So I'm giving this a two on the dragon scale. Next up, we have the Death by Ooze Chonk from Dispel Dice. This is a 95 millimeter die. It weighs just over half a pound. I could see as a DM using it for like a big consequential role, especially in front of players. The other day, my cat knocked it off of the top of a shelf and it chipped my laminate, so there's that. I have the full set of the regular Death by Ooze dice, one of my favorite iconic dice sets from Dispel, but for me definitely more of a display piece. This was only available in a lucky bag, but Dispel does sell several other chonks if you want just a just a big old d20. Since it's functional but just silly, I'm giving this a 3 on the dragon scale. All of these were gifted to me by the way because I'm pals with Karen. We work together for dice on my calendar. Next up, I offer you the death saving throw dice from Guild. Each one just has skulls and hearts to indicate successes or failures with like a special fancy skull for the natural one and a special fancy heart for the natural 20. I do like these as a way to make death saving throws feel important. Also, you could roll a new one for each death save, leaving them on the face they landed on in order to track your death saves. Now, Guild offers a ton of highly specific dice like this, like their Bardic Inspiration dice, which you can literally just hand to someone when you give them Bardic Inspiration, so they'll remember they have it. And like their Prismatic Spray D8 that just has symbols to indicate whatever the Prismatic Spray result is. I could see these having a place at a table that otherwise only uses pretty standard dice, especially like if the DM buys them and then just like hands them out to whoever's making death saves. But at most tables, these probably wouldn't get a 
ton of use, so I'm going to give them a 4 on the dragon scale. If you've ever wanted something in between a coin flip and a d4, Enter the D3. These are from Baron of Dice on Etsy. Obviously D3s don't come up in most tabletop games since most people don't have them or maybe the other way around. One D6 has an average roll of 3.5, but two D3 has an average roll of four. So I guess if for whatever reason you wanted to make a D6 roll weighted to roll higher, you could just roll two D3s instead. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. Since they're not included in a standard tabletop set, they are useless unless you make a reason for them to be useful. For that reason, I am giving D3s a five on the dragon scale. Side note, this listing was really confusing because it said sold by single count or pack of five, but then the dropdown was just the numbers one through 60. So I ordered three because they weren't very expensive and I didn't want to risk ordering one and then just receiving a single D3. So instead I received 15. What am I going to do? with these. <laughs> Next up, the treasure, trap, and monster generator dice from Viridian Gaming. These answer the question of, what if you made a rolling table into a die? This company has all kinds of generator dice, like weather generators and like dungeon generators. I got all three of the treasure generator dice because they just look so pretty together, but they're all the same. It's like magical weapons, scrolls, coins. Personally, I would not use these much during a campaign, but what I would do is write a fun one-shot where everything is randomly generated using dice like this. I think that would be a lot of fun. It really depends on the DM how useless these are. They could be quite practical for some DMs, but for me, I'm just an overthinker and I would very rarely be willing to use these in an actual game. So for me, I am giving these a six on the dragon scale, more of a novelty die. All right, we're getting to the really wild ones now. Next up is Pieces of Fate from Yarrow Studios. So these are flip dice, dice that you flip like a coin, but they are not D2s. You might hear that little rattle. It's because there's a tiny red bead inside of this coin. And then along the edge are little holes where that red bead settles and indicates which of those numbers you have rolled. So this full set of seven dice was $139, weirdly only the second most expensive dice in this video. But I could see these being a really cool thematic set for a character that's like luck related or uses coin flips in game. And even though these come in a fancy box, I would 100% store them in a little coin purse if I were bringing them to the table. Now these function just as much as regular dice do, but they are a little harder to roll and it's harder to see what result you've rolled. And of course, they are just so unnecessarily complex. So I am giving them a seven on the dragon scale. Next up, we will actually return to Viridian Gaming, who made those generator dice, to talk about this metal D100. Now, obviously every seven piece dice set comes with two D10s to be used to determine percentiles. But if you ever just wanted to roll a die that actually has a hundred sides, that's what this is for. This is like a metal golf ball. It's very heavy, it's over half a pound. I feel like you could probably kill someone with this. Now, theoretically, because every single seven piece set comes with percentile dice, this should be a very useful die. The problem is, it is so hard to get a clean roll on this. On any remotely padded surface, like a felt, it does not give consistent clean results, it just won't settle on a face. But on a hard, smooth surface, it just rolls forever, because it's basically a ball. So even though there are a lot of circumstances where a 100-sided die could be useful in a game, this die is not useful. Therefore, I am giving it an eight on the dragon scale. Okay, it's time to talk about the most expensive purchase in this video, and it's not even a full set. It is one D20. This was $200. May I present the Ascend Dice from the Shop of Many Things, a levitating D20. So here's how it works. It can't levitate in thin air because we live in the real world and there is no magic. It has to levitate over a base, and this base must be plugged in to a power source. The website says it works by a complex array of both permanent and electromagnets programmed by some technological wizards. It is supposedly guaranteed to be perfectly balanced, but it is sort of weird to roll because the magnets inside are loose. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be. Maybe I just like got a defective D20. It just doesn't roll smoothly because the magnets are like clonking along inside it while it rolls. I think an important note about this is it cannot be rolled on the base. You have to take it off the base in order to roll it. And when you roll it, it's just a regular D20, so it's not that exciting. So obviously this can be used, it's just a D20, but it is at its least interesting when actually being rolled. So I am going to give this a nine on the dragon scale. You may be asking yourself, what die could be more useless 
than a levitating D20 that costs $200. Buckle up, kids. <laughs> this is the Mobius one-sided die from Reaper Media. You heard that correctly. It is a one-sided die. That's because it is a Mobius strip. How is that possible? In a three-dimensional space? I'm so glad you asked. If I were to tape this into a loop, it would still have two sides, an inner side and an outer side. But if you twist, I am going to draw on this strip without lifting my Sharpie as best I can while holding this up in midair. And now we meet our first line. This shape appeared nearly 2000 years ago in Roman mosaics. That means that technically speaking, no matter how this shape lands, it is always landing on the same face. But because of that, it is not technically a die. That's because the purpose of a die is to generate a random number. And there is nothing random about only being able to roll a one. It is completely meaningless. There is no reason to ever roll this die. Therefore, this represents the upper limit. It is a 10 on our draft. Scale. But isn't it just so fun that this exists? I'm so curious if I'm the weirdo here or if it's normal to want dice that you basically can't use. On my last dice tour, someone commented saying that using dice that are hard to read is proof that I don't actually play tabletop games. Like I would have a field day with this video. In the meantime, you can check out my last dice tour video, which was way more about dice being pretty than being useless. Although honestly, some of those dice were pretty useless too. Even though this is my fourth dice tour video, you guys have only seen a fraction of my dice. I hate to say it, but storage is really starting to become a problem. I think I might be approaching having too many dice. No, that's stupid. That's not possible. What am I saying?